Welcome. My name is Jessica Devereaux. I'm the host and producer here at The Real News Network. This is our first ever film screening here at The Real News in Baltimore. Tonight we have a very, very special film that we just showed you the trailer of. It's called Shadows of Liberty. And we have a panel, an esteemed panel really, that I'd like to introduce you to. First, we have with us the filmmaker, Jean-Philippe Tremblay. He is a director, producer, and writer, and he originates from Quebec, Canada. He studied law and film studies at Carleton University, and his first feature documentary film, Shadows of Liberty, uh, he completed in 2012. Jean-Philippe continues to present Shadows of Liberty internationally and conducts numerous talks and interviews at film festivals and other social events like this one. We are delighted to have Jean-Philippe presenting his film here. So uh, please join me in welcoming Jean-Philippe Tremblay. We also have on our panel Glenn Ford. Glenn Ford is a distinguished radio show host and commentator. In 1977, Ford co-launched, produced, and hosted America's Black Forum, the first internationally syndicated black news interview program on commercial television. In 1987, Ford launched Wrap It Up, the first nationally syndicated hip hop music show broadcast on 65 radio stations. Ford also co-founded the Black Commentator in 2002, and in 2006, he launched the Black Agenda Report. Please join me in welcoming Glenn Ford. <laughs> also, we have on our panel Christina Borgeson. She was actually featured in the film. She's an investigative journalist and media critic. Christina has produced for major networks in the US and Europe, including CBS, CNN, PBS, and ART. Her investigative documentary, TWA Flight 800, premiered on Epics last July. She has won a Moreau and Emmy Award for her broadcast work. Please join me in welcoming Christina Borgeson. And last but certainly not least, uh, you all know him as the CEO and senior editor of The Real News. I know him as the guy I hope who doesn't call me on the weekend for more work, <laughs> is Paul Jay. Paul Jay is our senior editor and CEO at The Real News, and he was the executive producer and creator of CBC's News World's flagship debate programs, Counterspin and Face Off. Paul has produced and directed more than 20 major documentary films, including Return to Kandahar and Hitman Heart, Wrestling with Shadows, a feature-length documentary that was screened in 25 major festivals and won more than a dozen awards. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the visionary of The Real News, Paul Jay. All we ever get is a veil of distortion and lies and misrepresentations that obscure reality. We have an update on that. This evening, we have a lot of news to tell you about. Giant media corporations decide what is news and what is not news. This is to control people's ideas, is to control their imagination. The news we rely on is in the hands of commercial enterprises. If it didn't appear in the New York Times, Fox News, CNN, it never happened. There are certain events in journalism that you may not cover. There were incidences of physical abuse. CBS ah! decided this is not a story we're going to fight for. All of a sudden, the plane exploded, and one guy goes, Oh, you think it's a missile? It was a complete act of deceit. Well, we basically supported the Bush policy. When that many people die, you owe it to them to find out what really happened. Spying. Censorship. Militarism. Secrets. Corruption. Power. Lies. Profit. 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 This is the mother of all scandals. Corporations are making profit off the killing. You cannot go against the White House and survive. There has never been a conspiracy. Wars really are started by the mainstream media. Uh, Jean-Philippe, uh, if you could just speak a little bit about the, the film 
uh, what inspired you, and uh, you've been uh, going across the country and, and further. Uh, what kind of response you've had, and, uh, and also what kind of mood is there about trying to change the media situation? Yeah, well, I, I made the film with uh, Dog Factory and the Bertha Foundation, and um, the idea was to make a, a feature documentary film, and we wanted to make a feature documentary film about the most important issues uh, of our time. And uh, after researching a, a number of subjects, it was the subject of the media, the, how important it is, uh, you know, if we understand the media to be a central pillar of uh, a free society, of democracy. Uh, it was clear to, to me and my team that this was the most important story for us to tell. And um, along with that inspiration, uh, it was through literature, namely uh, through Ben Bagdikian's uh, book uh, entitled The New Media Monopoly. Uh, you saw in the credits that we dedicated the film to Ben Bagdikian. Uh, the first time Ben Bagdikian uh, wrote uh, uh, The Media Monopoly was uh, in the early 80s, where he said, uh, too few corporations <coughs> own and control mass media. At the time in the early 80s, he said there was about 50 corporations uh, owning and controlling most of the media uh, in the United States, and that was too few. As years went on, he kept updating his book, uh, uh, ultimately calling it The New Media Monopoly. The last home was maybe in, in 2004. The New Media Monopoly said that now we have five corporations uh, controlling most uh, of news and information in the United States. And these are corporations that don't just own the media, they have different interests, as we see here in the film. Uh, they have. Uh, defense contracts, uh, they make jet airplanes, uh, they, have, uh, they enjoy government welfare on a whole range of uh, business issues, and they own and control the media. And when we talk about the media, it's not just your news shows, it's about uh, uh, s uh, films, film companies, um, television, book publishing, uh, billboards. So uh, through this ownership, they're there to um, answer to one question first and foremost, and that's to feed the bottom line, which is profit. <coughs> and uh, you know we cannot trust the media where the bottom line is profit. So um, in 2007, uh, what really helped the film along was uh, the FCC hearings in 2007 and 2008. Uh, the FCC at the time the chairman was Kevin Martin, again as you see here in the film. <coughs> Uh, he announced that he was going to go around the country and ask the American people what they thought about uh, their media in order to create new media ownership rules. And uh, for me, that you know, that was uh, you know bells to my ears because uh, it was a great way for us to actually travel across the United States, go into communities uh, in Seattle, in Portland, Maine. Uh, in Tampa Bay, Florida. We traveled the whole country and uh, basically the, the bottom line that people were talking about is that they're fed up with their mainstream media. So that was really the inspiration for the film. Um, we also wanted to tell the film through journalists, you know, journalists that work uh, in mainstream, in independent media, and hear the experiences that they had uh, about trying to hold power accountable. I mean, if we understand that that's what we need to do when we investigate, I mean, we want to hold our governments accountable because we elect them, we give them our taxes, and uh, we also want to keep big corporations that have power accountable as well. And what we find out by these journalists, um, there's about, th there's 38 people in the film. I've, I, I, I think that they are some of the most groundbreaking journalists here in America, uh, not only of today, but of all time. And uh, they come and tell their stories about how if you actually go out and try to report and hold power accountable, you're brushed aside, your stories are destroyed, and uh, you can even uh, suffer character assassination. Um, so it's all these issues that we wanted to show in the film. and. Um, I must say that it's a great honor for me to uh, represent 
Doc Factory, the Bertha Foundation, everyone that worked in the film, and uh, to be here at The Real News today, uh, because I think an organization like The Real News is actually an inspiration about what can be done for the media in this country and around the world. Thank you. Uh, Christina, you're one of these journalists who was yes. more or less closed down. Uh, uh, <laughs> so tell us a bit about, first of all, the story you were covering. And, you know, these are, it's now on reflecting back, any, are you any further on the story yes. itself? Yes. And then a little bit on, on you've, you've published a book, you've been talking with other journalists who have had similar closing down of their work. Yes. Um, actually, I was assigned uh, 17 years ago to, to look into the TWA story. Um, I was at CBS. I was thrilled to be there because I was in the doc unit and I had just finished an investigative documentary. Uh, I, we'd done a documentary on Fidel Castro in the year before. I'd done a documentary on uh, farm workers updating Edward R. Murrow's uh, signature piece there, uh, Harvest of Shame. And I won an investigative, an Emmy for investigative reporting on that, so my star was, you know, rising there, and all of a sudden I was assigned to look into TWA 800, talking to people. They were saying they saw something go up and hit the plane. And when I came home to CBS to say, okay, you know, we've got to ask these questions, uh, boy, I was told to go talk to our Washington correspondent who was talking to Pentagon people, and the Washington correspondent was basically, Bob Orr, basically said, oh, no, no, that's not what my people are telling me. And I said, well, my people are, you know, the, uh, the uh, divers who are going in and complaining about not being able to, you know, being controlled by the Navy divers, et cetera. Anyway. The bottom line is, is, at one point, as you saw in the film, I received this piece of evidence that I was going to have tested. FBI came after me. CBS wouldn't let me even talk to them directly. I met with the lawyers. And um, then, next thing I know, CBS gave it right back, and I was out of a job literally weeks later. Even though I was told about a week before that I had this brilliant career ahead of me for all this great work I was doing, okay. So anyway, a few years after that, I was hired by ABC um, to, to uh, contribute a piece on, on TWA uh, for a pilot of, called uh, Pilot. It was going to be sort of a, an edgier 60 minutes on the entertainment side called Declassified. My experience at that time was uh, at one point, I was working actually with Kelly O'Meara. She and I were working on this together. At one point, while we were doing this investigation, our car was broken into. Documents were taken. It was a very professional job. They didn't, you know, very clean job. Car was broken into. They took our documents and they took our computer, right? Yeah. Everything else, you know. They left my, uh, golf club and my yeah, very. So it wasn't and a. So they a, weren't a, athletes. No, no. <laughs> I began to realize that this was a very strange story to be working on, and since I actually was reared in Haiti under Papa Doc, who I knew what Papa Doc used to do when he didn't like journalists, this was starting to sort of weird me out and, and worry me. And, um, and I basically was blacklisted, and I decided to publish, start publishing books, and I did a book called Into the Buzzsaw. And it was um, an anthology of essays by investigative reporters talking about their personal experiences with um, censorship. And it was such a shock to me, it really was. It was a shock to me that <laughs> this landscape of censorship existed. So, you know, I've basically been, um, you know, unemployable by the, I, I actually have connections to two of your other stories. Gary Webb, in Into the Buzzsaw, Gary Webb contributed the last essay he ever wrote about his, last and first and only essay he ever wrote about his personal experience mm -hmm. with his story. Uh, the Iraq story, I was hired by HDNet, Dan Rather's, uh, Dan Rather reports his show, to do a uh, show a, called The Cabal, which was about the run up to the Iraq war, who was exactly doing what, where, to make it happen, and who was trying to get us into Iran. And my story was killed in Dan's shop. 
so I do have a <laughs> connection to three segments in this thing. Well, we got to talk after this. <laughs> okay, but anyway, I'm <laughs> anyway, um, I never stopped looking into the TWA story. I never stopped, and neither did this young physicist, Tom Stalkup, very bright guy, who has by now amassed the largest personal archive of documents on this uh, story. We got together. We started producing uh, this documentary that I have just, we just completed last July. It, was, it aired on Epix. We managed to get six whistleblowers to come forward, blow the whistle on their investigation. These are including, you know, a senior National Transportation Safety Board uh, investigator who reconstructed the interior of the plane. These are very serious people. Medical examiner, NTSB's uh, medical, uh, senior medical forensic consultant, uh, TWA's chief investigator on it. Major people come forward and explain in detail exactly how it w the investigation was undermined, naming names, mm -hmm. and also explaining exactly what the forensic evidence they personally handled shows. And um, speaking of Exhibit A's, we used all that information, we put it in the documentary, and we also put it in a petition that we submitted to the National Transportation Safety Board to reopen the investigation. And they have accepted that petition, and they are reviewing it. And we've been in touch with them because they're really in a vise, because their own guys, people who are in their own investigation, and more people are coming forward. So that's what we've managed to do so far, is show what caused that crash. And it was ordinance. Who caused the crash is the next step. But what we did in this documentary was focus solely on the forensic evidence. First-hand sources who handled that evidence the government's own experts saying how that the, the entire thing was undermined. And what this story does also is show you that your government, your federal government, is not working for you because there was a multi-agency collusion going on. CIA was there from day two to start containing the eyewitnesses. CIA, NTSB, FBI with the Pentagon in the background. So if you want to support our efforts, please buy our DVD, because believe me, we're not popular. And uh, it's very hard to do this kind of work. It's very hard to get support from the you know, places that have money. And so we truly are a grassroots operation. That's Great. my story. Thanks very much. Thank you everybody for joining us and uh, please stick around for some more conversation and thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.